Hi, it's David at Fixer Frame at Mount Cravat. And if you're watching this today, this is a follow-up to our uh, Framers Club training that we just had on uh, last weekend in relation to uh, this atomic diamond frame. So what's happened since is uh, we, or last, in the last session, we made the, uh, the three frames, which uh, nesting inside each other, that end up becoming this, uh, this diamond shape frame. Uh, I've gone through and I've mounted uh, the, there's a metal plate mounted onto an old uh, book print and this is going to be the background inside this frame. So really it's going to be like so. I've cut a diamond shaped piece of Optium Museum acrylic which is the glazing component and now what we've got is the, uh, the customers come in and brought in a butterfly and we've got this little butterfly he's actually sitting just upside down here there is a piece of glue on the bottom that is how he came and so we got this amazing uh, amazing little butterfly which is looking you know it, it's a real butterfly and now we've got to mount that piece in the in the front and so I'm going to go through, I'm just going to mount it. If you've got any questions, you can always, uh, you can always ask them. I'll get back to you. I'll try and keep an eye. I do, have, um, I do have some chats running. I'll see if I can just get a chat up there. But if you, if you ever ask any questions, uh, I can always answer those later on if you're watching this on replay. So we're trying to stream this live. Uh, we're using a couple of platforms today through uh, XSplit and Restream IO. So we're testing these platforms. Uh, if you get any choppiness, it could be understandable. We've just got uh, broadband, oh, broadband. We've just got uh, the NBN here in Brisbane. So we're hoping that we can push out some better video content. So let me know as well in the comments how it's coming through at your end, if you're getting any choppiness or buffering, because that's going to help us moving forward with making more content for you guys. So you can catch, you should be catching this on Facebook and simultaneously we're streaming to YouTube. So wherever you are, if you make any comments, uh, I will see them. The, I should get them uh, back in my, my system. So just going to, open up a chat uh, chat functionality here so I can see what's what's going on just bear with me one sec and then I, I, I won't be watching the chat too much but if I do see uh, things pop up I'll answer the chat for you live and uh, and we'll embed it into our thing now our store is actually open at the moment, so there may be people going around, the phone's going off, couriers coming through. Uh, this is not a pre-record, we're just running live uh, in Brisbane. So, got a little, got my chat system set up there, and uh, let's just see if we can uh, embed that in the stream. I'll just see whether we get that running in the stream. Okay, let's have a little look. Hopefully we're hopefully we're there. So if you're if you're writing any any messages into the chat, uh, I'll try and keep an eye on that as as they come through. Uh, and um, yeah, by all means, uh, let me know if you've got any comments there. I'll try and keep a keep a little look at it. Let's get this screen up so I know what's going on. So I'll also try to sw switch to some close-ups, but anyway, what we've done so far, I've cut all those frames together. We've got a few issues in that the depth in this frame, we're going to need to put the uh, acrylic up on the face and build some spacer to accommodate the depth of the butterfly. And also, we have some issues in mounting the butterfly. So what I've done so far, I've just stitched the, uh, the metal plate. It's a sil little silver pun punchwork piece. I've stitched it on to, uh, through the paper that's been mounted onto a small three millimeter foam board. And this is serving as the background behind the butterfly. Now I've got to actually fit that to the frame before we put the butterfly into place because what's happened with this uh, design is the butterfly's wings actually overlap that first frame. So even before we go any further, I'm going to add some spacer to that back section. And the reason is, is I think when we're going in here and we've got the next one sitting on top, that the height of everything needs to sit the glass uh, or the acrylic off the butterfly itself. It's an anti-static acrylic, so we shouldn't have any issues. But 
If I don't chat to you while I'm doing it, I'm just going to focus on getting this done because this has got to go on a, on a flight to Ireland. It's a gift and we're on a bit of a tight schedule. So just to add pressure to it, I thought, well, I'll, I'll try and broadcast that as well while we're doing it. So I'll just switch over onto close up so you can see what I'm doing with these little pieces. And Jeff, yeah, if we lose a stream at any time, by all means, hang around. Uh, I'll always try to get it back as it is with most uh, live streaming, if we get issues with internet or dropout and things like that, we can lose that broadcast. But I am making a backup copy for all members of the Framers Club and we'll pop this into the members area for members. So, and if you're interested in joining Framers Club, you can have a look at framersclub.com uh, and uh, there's a sign up form there if you wanna join. There's about uh, two and a half, oh no, sorry, gosh, there's about five years of regular monthly broadcast content, all on complex framing. So if you want to learn how to frame, if you're a framing business and, you know, this is going out live to public today, but members uh, get content on training on how to make these complex framing every month. So join if you're interested. You can always uh, send me a message if you need me. You can always get me at Fixerframe uh, in Brisbane. So I just want to switch over this screen, see if we can get, get it up on, uh, just in a close-up for a sec. Sometimes it'll flick out while we do that, but this looks pretty good. Okay, so you can see I've got on the table here um, our little piece. Well, where it's printed on the background, what I thought I'd do is I had some offcuts. So when I trimmed, when I trimmed back the... Uh, the paper itself, I was left with these offcut pieces. And I thought, well, what I could do to help build the space is I could trim these little newspaper pieces up so that when they sat inside there, both, it all just matched the, the relevant piece. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut these to length inside the, the frame itself. And then we're going to add each layer so this little piece is going to sit around and going to become the internal spacer frame as such let's have a little look we've got another bevel one all of the bevel all of the pieces gosh i hope we're going to have it, have it long enough it's one of those one of those things where we're just using the remnant pieces i'll just check for size that's going to work there it was a bit like cutting cutting these pieces. Um, we cut the frame the other week or the other weekend in um, in our live cast on the weekend, and uh, and then we had to get to this point where we were going to make the frame itself. Now that's very close in length. Yeah, what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece off here. We, we don't have quite enough of the actual, um, of the actual uh, paper left at that point, but it should be able to sit into one of these pieces and we'll see whether we can turn it around and how this piece is going to fit. That will be okay, it's right up in the top. I might be able to use a small other section. I wanted to see how long that one is. Because yeah, we, what we're using is the offcuts, which are actually slightly uh, bigger than that uh, diamond part of the frame. But having said that, there is not a lot of the printed material left. And so, these little spacer pieces, I was just trimming those at about 10 millimetres. I'm using one piece to set the width for the other one. And I'm not being so critical about measurement in this case because we are filling the frame. And this component you won't necessarily see, but I wanted to have that newspaper or that uh, book print look just in case you... Uh, you glanced in there rather than having just a plain black spacer. I thought it would make a, um, I thought it would make a good thing. So I just need a piece of that one to just cut on. Bear with me. So yeah, I thought if I could have a, um, 
a small piece to uh, cut on, uh, uh, a small piece in there, you wouldn't actually see that, uh, that gap. So this one's going to fit in here. That's probably going to work quite nicely at that point. So if we put that one there, those pieces sit quite well there. They cover all the, all the gaps. And this top section can be cut to match that end piece. So yeah, a little bit of little bit of tricky spacer manipulation going on, but that is just to try and gain a few more millimeters of space because we haven't got a lot of space in this thing in in rebates. And if I add additional spacer to the outer frame that we're going to do, I'd rather try to keep everything as much as I could inside that that dimension. So yeah, just gonna fit these spaces. This is just double-sided tape I'm applying. So yeah, we... And so this isn't really like, this is gonna give me about maybe 10 mils of depth that I can use in the, um, in the back section of the, of the, the frame. So, uh, it's just an extra extra place I found, you know, when I was starting to put this together, I found that I could gain this additional little bit of space that might enable me to save on trying to build an extra big spacer into this frame, which will be very awkward. So, yeah, you'll see as things progress, this is a complex, uh, complex layer. So what we got going on, that's... Um, That's looking quite good. It's going to sit down in there, a bit fiddly. Yeah, you won't you won't actually see. You'll see only a glimpse of that spacer because this component, this piece here. Where are we? Top, bottom. It's going to look sit right well there. So I'm not going to. I'm going to actually put a backing over this when we finally get to it. But at this stage, that I'm just going to staple uh, into place. Running a little bit of airline from our compressor out the back. So I'm just going to put a few few pins in here to hold it in place. We will actually add additional backing to this afterwards, but this is just so I can mount this uh, butterfly to a point where I can put, have something to work to. So at this stage, I've got that metal piece, uh, quite a luminescent piece mounted uh, in, the, in the frame itself, and there's a little hole, and that hole, uh, I made that hole because the butterfly itself, when it came to us, it had a glue section mounted on it. So anyway, when you look inside this frame, don't worry about the outside edges, the corners, the, this was cut on the guillotine and you won't actually see these areas, you're only gonna see the internals. And what's gonna happen, uh, that should give us enough space and if we actually look down into it, that uh, newspaper print is, the, is now inside lining that, that uh, that little rebate actually up inside there so that you don't you don't see it and it gives us another bit of space. So our butterfly itself, when I looked at it, I noticed that they'd mounted the piece on, um, it looked like they'd mounted it using a lump of a glue stick. So normally I'm not in favor of using uh, glue sticks for mounting uh, in, uh, in picture framing, but I think in this case the the glue stick may actually give me the ability to uh, to position this butterfly. Uh, it's 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 a little bit fragile, but it's not really. Like we've got we've got things that we can pick it up. I'm picking it up with my hands. There is a little pin that is sitting there that we can use to pick it up. But he's been sitting in this box. A little bit of fluff on his proboscis there. So on the back of this butterfly, I'm going to turn him over in the box itself. So 
this has been sent through the post, so some collector sent this butterfly, but there is actually this little spot of uh, glue that's right in the middle, and what it looks like is that they've cut off a glue stick, and then they've melted the end of the glue stick, and they've donked it onto the butterfly. So I figure that rather than, I could, I could pin through the whole butterfly, and we may end up doing that, but I th and there is a pin here for that but rather than doing that I thought what I would do is try some hot melt glue in this hole and then see if I can't mount this butterfly on top of the hot melt, hot melt glue so I just kind of pop him down very gently on the on the board there for a sec because we've got our butterfly sitting there and we've got our, our, our glue gun I might just switch Oh no, it'll, it'll be right on there. So I'm just waiting to get some heat up into this gun. We'll just see if we got some... I need another, another little glue stick. I think, we, I think we normally use some of the... Uh, that might be too small. We have a couple of different sizes of glue guns around. And of course, in my haste today, but this should work. I, I'm not going. I'm, I might just push it through by hand. I just want to see if I've got some uh, some adhesive coming out. If it's hot enough. Yeah, we got a little bit of glue. So I'm just going to put a blob of glue in that central location. Not a great deal. And I want to pick the butterfly up. I, I probably should use pin here, but I'm just going to go right onto it because I know where I want to put this. The person who's uh, this frame was for had the butterfly designed so that the the um, the wings came up onto this uh, overlapping this other. Uh, frame here and so I just want to just let that glue set let the hot glue set so you can see we've we've just got our butterfly sitting if we hold it sort of side on actually just have a bit of a look at where those those wings are sitting one one wing sits a bit higher but I'm not too I'm not too concerned about how the wings are sitting at this stage they've actually got to sit inside the frame when we get it when we get it going but front on this is the top of the frame the butterfly is actually going to sit uh, sit central and then what we're going to have is we're going to have a second molding that goes around there and then this is where oh, this is pretty good like what I was what I was concerned about I'll just flip back up onto the other camera for a sec We'll just take a quick a quick squiz at this. So my biggest concern with uh, was trying to get as much um, as much space uh, into this as we could. And so when I hold this up, this butterfly, if, if I sight it down there, this wing is very close to top of this frame here. And that was my concern of it touching the, the glass itself. Like it is a little bit uneven, but we can probably tweak that a bit, but I don't really want him to, um, to come off. Like he's, he's just, he's held on there or she's held on there in, in that position quite well. So this is the two frames here, and we're going to need to join these together. We haven't joined them. But the other thing that we've got to do is we've got to get this outer molding and have it eventually going on there like so. So it's gonna sit on the outside. So what we'll do to do that is before I fit that piece, I'm gonna to need to add some uh, acrylic. And what we've got is we've got our anti-reflective. We have uh, couriers coming to us every day and I must say the couriers that we get uh, are probably the most fun, some of the most fun people around. I know sometimes they're busy, but uh, it's always good to, uh, to see some of the guys that actually run around and deliver our map boards and uh, boards and other frames and things to everybody uh, around the country. 
So, yeah, so we're just, this is uh, anti-reflective optium. And the thing about this material is because this is going on a plane, I didn't want to particularly use uh, glass, although the, the customer wanted to use museum glass. And in fact, this is more expensive than museum glass and it has the same uh, characteristics. In fact, it has higher protection than the museum glass because it will not break in transit. So it's anti-reflective. So at this stage, this, this material does not, um, does not attract dust. I just want to get some little pieces. I can see a little strip of material here. We don't normally, uh, we don't normally clean, whoop, there we go. We don't, we don't normally uh, clean this when we put it in the frame because it is so uh, super clean that, um, let's see one little bit on the end here that I want to remove, but it's normally so super clean that uh, it repels all of the dust. In fact, it's an amazing product. So take this little piece off the end. Yeah, so I'd, I'd pre-cut that. I will actually give it a wipe, but the, the, uh, the material itself, um, if you've never, never seen it before, uh, it repels uh, dust from it, doesn't scratch. Uh, it's a really um, beautiful high-end product to use for all sorts of framing. Uh, the only thing that really restricts people from using it is its, uh, is its cost. Um, but in this example, the uh, museum glass or optium, it's not, we, we had some uh, here, so we decided to go for optium because it's going to give that, that beautiful finish. Now, I just want to turn that uh, glue gun off a sec. We don't need him any more today. So yeah, in terms of uh, now I need just a little bit more space. And so I was experimenting before with just some uh, three mil uh, black spacer. And this is an adhesive one. And I'd cut it again, just to stick on to this, um, this Optium. And the reason, again, I was wanting to use this is I wanted to just gain that extra little bit of space because I know that the, um, I know that the butterfly, it'll go, it won't touch, but I'd rather have that tiny bit extra in there if I really need to, uh, need to allow for it. So just going to cut a couple other pieces of that. I'm sure I had some knocking around. Where do we put it? We were trying to get this, uh, we, we always have streamed in the past, we we're trying to get a new, our new streaming uh, going. And uh, so we've been messing around with trying to get the stream going for about an hour. Um, but now we're, hopefully we're up and running, hopefully we're getting not too much chop. Um, so yeah, if you, if you have questions, please ask away. Sometimes other people can even answer the questions if they see them there coming through in the in the chat yeah, inside framers club we uh, we do a lot of um, and, and at fixer frame of course we do a lot of uh, complex framing it's one thing that people come to us for because we have a, a good reputation for making unusual frames so yeah here I'm just building up some more spacer Hopefully this is going to be deep enough to keep the entire um, butterfly back from the acrylic itself. Just got to watch some of these little angles. I'm cutting this with the wire cutters. It's not um, it's not I not ideal. I'd like to. Um, I like cutting it with a knife actually and then scoring it, but because these angles are not your normal uh, 90 degree, 
using the little wire cutters is enabling enabling me to nip the nip this spacer off on this odd angle and if you'd been with us with the framing club training you'd have seen how we uh, did the calculations on this because normally we do rather uh, complex calculations but we were fortunate in that we were able to discover a new way to set our equipment which really uh, saved us a lot of time and a lot of heartache with getting the size right and the dimensions right. So yeah, I've just, I'm just cutting these little spaces to length and nibbling it as I go to get that, that length right. Because I want that cut. It's not really uh, 60 degrees or whatever the, the angle is here. We, we had to make this match the actual metal part that the, the customer brought in. So it wasn't something that we could have a, uh, our own uh, diamond shape. We had, to, we had to come up with a unique diamond for this. And you can appreciate that with three frames going together, the complexity of the stacking is quite intense. So I just want to get hold of a little microfiber just because not that uh, this has much dirt or anything on it, but if I've caught it anywhere there where I've touched the, the glass or the acrylic, I don't really want any mark there. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab one of my uh, spray bottles. We've got them out the back. Yeah, so just a little bit of um, little bit of glass cleaner onto the anti onto the um, microfiber just to clean anything off there. I don't particularly like the microfiber cloths; um, they tend to smear things around quite a bit. We always tend to go back. I was using the soft one there just to to put the cleaner on with, but then I'm going to come back with a cotton cloth just to clean this. Yeah, we're fortunate that it repels dirt a lot of the time, this uh, Optium. So yeah, there's fingerprints on the other side, I can see them, but inside is pretty crystal, uh, crystal clear at this stage. Just gonna flip it, I just wanted to see, I had it with a couple of angles, I wanted to see which angle was looking right on my dimension, because I had one set that I preferred to be the top. And so now that I've got that, that set, I don't really want to blow the butterfly or anything here. There's uh, not really, if anything comes off him, we might have an issue, but I'm just going to pop the two together. I just noticed one. Little hair. What that? What? What I notice there is when I use when you use a glue hot glue gun. Um, generally, when you pull it away, it leaves a fine strand. You are better off just letting that dry and then get rid of it later. And I could just see the remnant of the strand. So I just want to have a quick look to make sure there was nothing there that really looked out of place. And I think that's going to go straight in on top of this spacer. So at this point we've really got some complex levels that we need to hold together. I'm gonna to turn it over, we'll have a bit of a look at the other side and just see how it looks and give it a clean. In fact, what I might do before I do that, I'll check some of the uh, little angle brackets that we've got. We have varieties of, um, of bits and pieces that we use, varying from little little right angle pieces that we're able to, to use and bend and do all sorts of things. We, we have different heights of them. In fact, we might use some of these little right angle brackets that we've got here, because this looks like it might work screwing these in. So what I might do, 
we might put a couple of those on right now and just have a look give it a flip over and I'm thinking in the next step up let's have a look what fits there that's not quite right that one's pretty good so we've got a couple there that we can use on the top section we've got some there that we can use on the bottom I'm just going to take a uh, little handful of 10 mil uh, self tapping they're actually a um, 8 gauge uh, screw or we've got 6 and 8 gauge um, and I'm just going to drill those into place and put some of these brackets on. I know I could flip it over right now and have a look, but I generally I prefer to have something there holding it. Always find if you, um, what we might do is I might put the two outer ones on and we'll see where we get the, whether, where we get the alignment. Um, I tend to put the two, prefer to put the two, uh, or the outer clips on to hold things together before I go through and put the um, turn it over and the reason is is uh, often if you pick something up and turn it over and it's not held it's not held in you can still get dust into that when uh, because because uh, you know you haven't you haven't actually fixed it so my preference is to of course fix it first just having a look at that, that uh, drill bit shot or the, the screwdriver bit so just going to pop a couple of these on really need to it's got a funny uh, this frame design when when we were first looking at it. it's got a slightly unusual curve curvature to it so it's not not the outer one there's a middle frame it's this is com composed of three different moldings put together um, and that has a rolled outer edge which is not not ideal from the point of view of a um, take those two off for a sec from the point of view of a uh, a spacer frame but we had to work with it because it was the only one that had that finish so just come up back up on here a sec we'll have to see if you can see what's going on with the where these brackets are going yeah so just I'm just positioning this on the outside first of all I'll add some more brackets uh, add some more brackets later I just want to put these on just so that I can hold it a little bit better then we can take a look at where it's sitting with our butterfly so yeah the outer frame on this or the, the outer three frames really was probably about uh, a couple of hours of messing around and cutting and joining which is quite a long time for uh, cutting and joining a picture frame but when you've got some things that are not uh, standard and this is by no means standard in its in its angles there are there are not necessarily fast methods that you can take so with most picture framing it's still one of those um, industries where we're quite uh, labor intensive and um, yeah, you, you have to take your time, much like some of the woodworking and, you know, we've all got, everybody's got great machinery that makes some of the tasks quicker, but it still usually involves a person who actually needs to make judgments about how things work and where they go and things like that. So never really a, a super quick solution to most framing unless it's just a... A very basic job so I've just put some in there and what I want to do I'm going to run some of these other bigger ones up on the top I don't think I can use the little right angles there oh actually it's not far it's not far off I'm I might I might even ran, run the right angles because I've got to put a screw in the top face anyway um, 
So I think I'm going to use the same uh, the same fitting, but we'll just we'll just lift it up to the next level. So I just want to put some in here. Actually, I'll put them cent centrally on this one. And I'll add some others later. But we want to just get in and have a look at how the how the face is looking. Again, just want something to hold it. When we come to finish the back here, we'll build a beautiful um, suede covering that will cover a lot of these fittings. But the fittings are there to hold everything together. A quick way might be to, uh, to staple this in, to nail these together. And I think with mass produced frames or if they were doing things along those lines, some of this might be stapled rather than what I'm doing here, which is screwing these brackets. But the bracket gives me a little bit more control over how things come together. That's nice, that's holding that together. Actually, it's probably, yeah, that's held enough for me to even show you at this stage. So I'm, I've got to put more on, but I just want to have a, have a bit of a look. So, a bit of dust from the drilling. Now, at this stage, we haven't fit that whole piece together, but I'm just going to give it a bit of a spray on the, the front here. A little, little bit, a little bit of creaking and what have you going on in the frame because everything is not bolted together yet. But this is looking really sensational at this stage. Which we've got our butterfly central in the position. So let's just hold it up so you guys can have a bit of a look. That, um, that's how it's sitting, sitting in the frame. He sort of sits down somewhat from the, from the piece. And this, this uh, UV uh, filtering acrylic is fantastic. It gives us all that uh, luminescence coming through from the butterfly with very, very, very low reflection. So all I'm going to do from here is I just got to finish this backing off. I probably want to go through and make sure that we got nicely clean before we go all the way. Yeah, there's a little bit of play there because we haven't actually put the the back components together, but we're going to go in. Yeah, because we because we've only just held those, we need to add a few more few more pieces to this to hold the thing together and there's a little bit of play in everything of course and we've got to put one down in here in fact this is one of these we'll work our way around is just going to give us some reinforcement and then I guess you'll want to see how we make this this backing look good because we're going to have to cover up a lot of these fittings and make it look really nice and neat so yeah there's a little bit of um, a little bit of play in some of this these uh, frames together but generally it's pretty good like this is this is all, all all holding well yeah so lots of lots of little brackets I say that generally there are some quick methods with nailing and what have you, but uh, this will certainly give any any frame of the opportunity to get into it again if they need to, 
and what we'll do is we'll build something that covers over that back very nicely. And straight in. And one up on the bottom there. Two down in here just to hold this this piece firmly down into the frame. So yeah, this uh, when when we initially saw this the. Uh, the customer brought in a uh, an idea and a link to Instagram to show some designs, which was uh, atomic folk art. And so that atomic folk art, uh, we took a look. They wanted a diamond because they'd found this metal piece and they'd found the book and they wanted this extreme design. And so we had to having equipment that doesn't really cut these such sharp angles we had to make jigs to cut to cut this frame and make it work so what I've done I've put all plenty of fittings on there there's a bit of dust that's coming out but that that dust is generally from the uh, where we've we've screwed into the frame I'm just checking that there's nothing just coming out onto the into the frame itself. Pretty spotless in there. It's looking it's looking rather rather awesome. And really, what I've got to work out now is how can we finish that piece to make the backing uh, the backing work. And so, if we're going to do um, if we're going to do so yeah, you guys would have seen this one uh, previously on, if, if you're a Framers Club member, you would have seen that uh, the other week. Now you're able to see that uh, here with us today doing this design. In fact, I can see a little bit of fluff there that I'm gonna need to move around a bit. But with our backing, I'm gonna take another backing and we're gonna uh, lay a large piece on there and I'll actually mitre it and score it and fold it down. So not, um, I just, I'll just show you the principle here because I'll need to go and get some bits to get it happening. We're gonna take a big piece that'll come right over the top here. And what I'll do is we'll take a split. So when this piece is here, for example, we'll split this piece out and we'll score it. I'll just give you a quick, quick overview. This is a piece of um, actual foam board that I was using as a sample for a person wanting to mount some artworks. It's an archival one. So when we cut our board, it's gonna be scored and cut down this way. And then obviously when we have our other one and our score line runs this way here, this piece is gonna fold down this way and we'll take a section out of here that's gonna to equate to the backing. So I'll make a beautiful folded backing and then we're gonna cover that in suede. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop the live broadcast here. If you've got any questions, by all means, ask them in the chat, but we're pretty much up to the point where we're just gonna add a backing to it, give it a clean, some hangers, make sure that all the corners and everything are perfect and that it's all good. And then we can uh, call a client up because they've got to get this going and onto a plane off to Ireland. So anyway, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you in the store at Fix the Frame at Mount Cravat. And we'll see all you members in the Framers Club again soon. Keep your eyes open for more uh, live broadcasts coming out to you on Facebook or YouTube. We're gonna go, now that we've got high-speed broadband, we're gonna be going back to doing a lot more 
uh, technical, some technical training live, and also some, some basic things. So if you've got an interest in framing, keep an eye on the Endurart channel on, foam board, uh, on uh, YouTube, and by all means, join Framers Club or keep an eye on uh, Fix a Frame on Facebook. Okay, well, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for being with us today.